All right. So um, just for the sake of the recording, I'm going to introduce myself again. Uh, welcome and thanks everyone for being here. I'm Josiane. Those of you who hang out on our Discord server know me as Kimia Nag, and um, I'm your host today. And I'm happy to have with us um, four amazing designers who are participating in the Fast Enough Yarn Along this year. We do have Lori of At Lori Designs, Natalia of Natalia Yarncraft, Sheila of Knit Dance Repeat, and Shayna of Shayna Lines Designs. I'm going to go ahead and place their links into the chat. There you go. And now I'm gonna ask them to introduce themselves and tell us a little bit about them and their business, how they got started. So anyone wants to start? Or I'm calling on Laurie. Um, hello. Um, at Glory Designs is um, exclusively Tunisian crochet. I have been designing since 2017. Um, I got started probably, uh, I've been crocheting since I was a little kid, but I found Tunisian crochet back in 2016-ish and I just fell in love with it. But back then there was hardly any Tunisian crochet patterns out there. It was really still very obscure. So um, once I ran out of interesting designs that I could make by other people, I decided it was time for me to start designing myself. And I've really kind of become obsessed with it. I, It's a lot of fun. I even just came out with a book about a month ago, um, so I can hopefully get more people interested also in Tunisian crochet. Did I answer all your questions? <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> okay. Um... So let's keep going with Natalia. Uh, so my name is Natalia, and usually uh, everywhere I'm going as uh, Natalia Yarncraft, but on Ravali, my it's on my uh, normal name <laughs> by Natalia Pesh for all my design. So and um, I need since I'm teenager girl, so it's like forever for me and crochet about, I don't know, so also many years. And um, so I designed for um, for knitters and for crocheters. Also, sometimes I create patterns that is the same design, I mean the same loop, but it has uh, two patterns. One pattern is for uh, knitters and one pattern is for crocheters. So it's not exactly one to one, but very similar. So because yeah, two different crafts, you you can <laughs> uh, transfer directly. So, but in some designs, I try to do this connection, and I call them like a siblings patterns. So I have a couple of this. Yeah, and uh, I published my first design in twenty twenty, but like as designing for myself, I have no idea how many years I have done this. So it's <laughs> many years, yeah. But like big kick to start in publishing, it was uh, 2020. Awesome, okay. thank you. Thank you so much. Um, let's go with Sheila. Hi, um, I'm Sheila from Knit Dance Repeat Designs. Uh, I I was always playing around with designs, mashing together uh, other patterns and things. And people kept asking me, is there a pattern for that? Well, I took this from here and that from there. And uh, so I put up back in 2009 I put up my first pattern for free on my blog it's still a free pattern available my incursion ropes hat 
And I just kind of snowballed from there. And when I had to give up work um, due to a severe injury, um, my knitting was my comfort. It was something I could still do even when I was having days I couldn't get down the stairs. And it just became it became a bit of a lifeline to my old life as a dancer. So all of my patterns have some connection to my Irish dance background. It's my way of kind of holding on to it. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Shana. Um, hi, um, I'm excited to be here. I'm Shana. Uh, my handle is Shana Lines Designs and I'm a knitting pattern designer. My background is in architecture and design education. And so I still do teach some architecture classes. Um, I came into pattern design in 2018 when my, my son asked me for a superhero cape and he drew something that was um, pretty specific about the way the lines went together. And I thought I can do that. And the, so the first pattern I put together, I kind of, I, I, I treated it like he was my client and he had specific needs and I was the architect and I got to come up with the design and the directions. Um, and it was really satisfying. It is not a super popular pattern. It's called super cape because there's not a huge need for um, modular superhero capes as it turns out, but um, it was really fun. Um, in the next year, I designed a few hats that a fr friends of mine said they wanted hats and I didn't it didn't quite scratch the same itch for me as like coming up with something that um, I was really constructing the way it went together. Um, and so I think it was about a year later, it was in 2019 that I actually kind of got something that um, it's a, it's a poncho, which um, I feel like I have a lot of conversations with people about ponchos and you're either like really into ponchos or really not into ponchos. I'm squarely into ponchos. Um, but I began to think um, my architectural brain, we're always thinking about materials and the economy of materials and how they can be used. The materials come in certain sizes. So there is some logic to the way we design. And I thought, I think I understand shapes and I understand how to write directions in a way that I can come up with things that um, make a good use of materials, and they actually, they're multifunctional in a lot of ways. So um, I believe all my designs are actually pretty simple. Um, they're, uh, they're things that I like to make and wear um, or people in my life have asked me, hey, do you think we could do this? Um, and so I always say, I think they're very beginner friendly. And I think that if you if you follow my pattern, you can meet the rubric, you can, you can hit all the checkpoints, but I design them in a way also that if you have a moment of thinking, how could I, how could I riff off of that? I give you that freedom too. I, I love that. I love that. And I love how you incorporated your background and used, you know, the, um, the skills that you have to make use of as an architect. Um, I, just quick aside, my, my husband was trained as a computer scientist as a programmer, but he's now a fantasy and science fiction writer, but he's still approaching things in the same way, you know, with the same um, trying to to find the needs and identify and all that. So not, nothing is lost really from what we did before. Just the same with um, Sheila, who's using dance as a huge inspiration, so. That's very, very good. Um, so let's keep going with, uh, with a question we had. Uh, that is, what is your favorite technique in your chosen craft? So we have a Tunisian crocheter ear. Do you have a favorite technique that you, that you use most in your designs? I don't know if I necessarily have a favorite technique within Tunisian crochet. I constantly like exploring new techniques. So I don't necessarily stick with one and just stay with it. My my designs are all over the place. If you wanted a cable a design with cables, if you wanted a design that's using mosaic, if you want a design that's using um, 
lace techniques, I like to play with them. I tend to um, like to stretch my brain when I'm making the designs, but I also want the designs to be user friendly. So there, there's a lot going on with um, just playing with stuff. And I, this is how I relax after my day job. I'm an engineer during the day, so I, I want to have something creative to play with. So I go all over the place. So I don't have a favorite. How about that? And just following on what we are saying, do you think that your engineer brain is um, c comes into play when you design? Um, it comes into play a lot, I think, when I am writing the patterns up because it's mm -hmm. a very methodical way of doing stuff. Um, you know, I, I try to be very concise, but, you know, very appropriate to the level of the pattern so that, you know, the beginner patterns have more details than the advanced patterns as far as like for what techniques are used and stuff like that. So it's a very, I, I part of my engineer job is writing uh, technical procedures for testing instruments. And so I think that comes a lot into play when it comes to the pattern writing portion of my design business. So cool. That's awesome. So, Natalia, any favorite technique for you? Um, I, I'm a theory, actually. I don't have exact one thing that I, I usually do. So I just go in mentally through my list of uh, the pattern. And I think it's more uh, about color than mm -hmm. about technique. So uh, many of my, of my uh, designs have couple colors or uh, just um, bring a color to play and so it's like not exactly about technique but I, I do uh, try different things um, I, 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 did, I did a pattern in color work I also did patterns in uh, modular technique and also some of them knitting color work and parallel to this crocheting color work. So it's like uh, doing different things. But also I think it's because I don't like for myself to do the same over and over. That's why I doing also uh, my patterns, also uh, different uh, technique using different techniques. So if I use this one, I'm trying to explain as possible, as easy as possible, and explain what is going on here. For example, for modular technique, I add some extra picture to the pattern. Usually, I try to avoid many pictures in the pattern because I know people, uh, some people like to print them. So, just <laughs> to avoid as many pages, I try to. Um, give pictures only on a pattern page. But for specific techniques, I see, I see uh, a need for extra pictures and extra explanation that I, I give to the uh, customer. So here is your pattern with this and this and this steps. So <laughs> in conclusion, I don't have a preferred uh, technique. Yeah, and but for myself, I, I like cables, and but I don't have many patterns with cables. So it's only, right now, it's only one small collection <laughs> of two patterns. <clears throat> awesome. Yeah. Well, um, talking about cables, I think it's time to call on um, uh, Sheila. Yes. Oops. Uh, yeah. Um, um... Cables are definitely a big part of my work. Um, uh, I, I really, I've always loved cables. They were one of the first things I discovered when I started knitting. I started knitting when I was 12. Um, I taught myself from a kit in, I bought from a tour department with my babysitting money. I didn't know anybody that knit, but I wanted to learn. And um, getting books out of the library, I found that either cables or lace I could do because I didn't need to invest in a lot of yarn. So I made all kinds of, now we would go, now I know that they were, I was swatching and I didn't know it, but <laughs> I made all these different squares and I'd sew them together to 
make little blankets and things. And um, so, yeah, I still play with cables. I still play with lace. And I've been doing a lot of playing with uh, double knitting and adding cables into the double knitting. So cables kind of just keep drawing me back. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Uh, yeah, I think you have a double knit scarf with a color work yeah. cable. Or yes. some, yeah, it, it, yeah. You, uh, right you're cabling it. with the colors, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, my my first double knitting pattern, I went through cables in, and I think I scared a few people. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Let's let's jump. Let's, dive right in you know please <laughs> right and um natalia was talking about modular knitting but i do think shayna has something to say about that as well as a favorite technique um it's so funny because sometimes i'm like i'm just so boring because i really love garter stitch which in knitting is knit every single row it's just the knit stitch um, and so a lot of my designs, um, I use, as I was saying before, kind of, I can, I can see a shape sometimes in my head. And so it was so interesting, Lori, when you were talking and you were saying like all different types of techniques, I was like, I'm, I think of the way that I approach things sometimes is I'm like, how can I use the same stitch in different ways to like turn a shape? And so um, I love garter, I love garter stitch. I really do. And I love, um, so I'll show you a couple of little pieces. Um, so I've, I make a lot of things that garter stitch goes in, in two different directions. And, um, the reason why it works, um, why the construction works, I use a, I slip one stitch at the end of each row, the relationship of the stitches in garter stitch is um, two rows or one garter ridge equals one stitch. And so I have people all the time, they sell me, well, Shana, not in my knitting. And I say, but the way my patterns work, it's built on that as um, the way that these things go together. So um, this is a pair of fingerless mitts that are, there's no seaming at all. <laughs> um, and so the stitches are picked up and joined um, the whole way across. Um, and so a lot of my patterns, like there aren't special stitches. It's sort of, you're holding your work in a different way. So I have a pattern, I have four of them in my lap, but I'll just show you this one. So this is the modular bento bag. And so I was actually teaching some knitting classes last summer and I wanted to develop some patterns. This didn't end up being um, for the class, but um, it's for some other things, but basically I became fascinated with the idea of bento bags um, in turn, like what, what I understand is that it's a long rectangle. It's three times the length. Um, the Sorry. I don't know if I said that right. The length is three times of the height and it's assembled in a way that it creates a bag. So, um, so that's, that's what I started making. And I started making them in many sizes. So this is, um, I think you can see the striping a little bit better. You can see the directionality right mm -hmm. here. Um, but there's not a single purl stitch and there's no seaming <laughs> that happens here. So it's all just the order of operations. So, um, so I really like garter stitch with a slip stitch edge. Um, and then I really like the, the, um, the thoughtfulness of the finishing details. And I guess I mean like how you start and how you end. Yeah. Very interesting, you know, how to take the simplest thing in knitting and figure out ways to, to have it do everything you wanna do. That's very cool. I, I have a bunch of patterns that sometimes I look at them and I was thinking it when um, some of the other designers were talking that I thought I have a few patterns and sometimes I'll sit and I'll look at it and I'll go, this is a rectangle. Like that's all it is. Like how have I made so many pages for a <laughs> rectangle? Right. Um, and for me, it becomes, um, I think Lori was talking about sort of the, the process and the way of explaining the directions and her engineering brain. And I think my architectural brain, it's like, we're, we're thinking in that way of sort of how do I 
hand over the directions because I'm not there. I'm not telling you how to do it. I need to give you a process that makes sense. And Natalia was talking about, you know, queuing into to photos and so forth. And so um, I'm always thinking about what is, you know, what is the experience of someone coming into a pattern um, on their free time, you know, after a long day on a weekend and how can they actually enjoy it and then have a piece that they're they're proud of and they're excited about that's actually useful to them too. And for mm -hmm. me, it's garter stitch. That's it, right? <laughs> right, right. And just like Laurie was saying that she's designing, you know, have her day job. Well, most people who will be knitting or crocheting your designs are doing that as well, you know, in their spare time, once everything's done and, and everything. So yeah, it, it needs to be clear enough for them to be able to just enjoy the process and that break their brains trying to figure out what the hell <laughs> the designer meant so um just i was just gonna you, add on yeah, to that sure. i was like like yeah my my main goal in you know at the end of like you know all the whole process of you know editing and testing and all the things is to never ever get a single pattern support question and <laughs> Because, you know, I want people to just, you know, it needs to be easy. Like, the what they're physically doing isn't easy, but understanding what they need to do should be easy. Right. So that they can get into the flow of things and just, just do it and have fun doing it. Right. A quick one here. Um, do you prefer designs that challenge you as a designer or ones that you can crank out with ease? I prefer, well, I actually have a mix of both um, because just like most people, there are some days where I need something that is just mindless to like, you know, something that I can relax to that I don't have to like constantly be consulting the pattern and stuff. And usually a lot of my accessory patterns like shawls and stuff like that, they're kind of designed so that once you do, you know, the first 20 rows or something like that, it becomes a very intuitive um, design to continue doing. For garments, I tend to have a little more fun. I figured if you're going to be making something that you wear, it's more important for it to work technically than to necessarily be a very intuitive, easy way to do it. And I can have a lot of fun that way with getting with creative with how you do the shaping and stuff like that and, you know, the stitch patterns, so a little of both. And then there's things like lace shawls, which there's no way you're gonna have that be mindless. So that one, you know, the sky's the limit. Have as much fun getting the little intricacies in as you can. Nice, nice. Natalia. So for me also, it's like, uh, I my my life is on the go usually i have three kids and usually it's like everywhere and going this and this and this so that's uh also my design sometimes happen during this busy time and some for example if you're going driving or uh, for uh going on a long drive and i need something quick and i i start doing for myself and then as i'm doing this process convert, <laughs> converts to actual design. And uh, so, for example, one of my shawls, it's a uh, never ending uh, diamond shawl. It started this way. It's like very simple uh, stitch pattern that I can repeat, repeat, repeat until basically I, I run out of yarn and that's it. This is easy way, uh, quick way. And sometimes I, get, I have an idea for something and then I start dive, uh, digging what I can do here, in interesting and more specific, this or this way. And for example, one of my patterns, um, C-Tie Caplet, it's involve more um, different uh, types of, uh, for example, uh, short row and lace and some uh, special uh, ending and so and so. So it's, uh, I'm doing one way for myself, this easy way. Sometimes I do it also 
I try to chill, challenge myself. That's my design is also more challenging for others. So <laughs> it's <laughs> both ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's also interesting that you can uh, do uh, easy thing that sometimes looks more complicated than, than it is in real actual process of making them. And sometimes it's, yeah, you need to sit down and be here with your project and not watching TV or <laughs> something else. Yeah, if you want uh, more involvement in your uh, project and dig deep uh, in, uh, for example, meeting of our shame. Yeah, I like both ways. <laughs> right. And just to go back to one detail you mentioned that sometimes you like to keep going until you run out of yarn. Um, I think that's one thing that you you are careful about. You like um, your designs to to be able to use all the yarn someone has. Yes. And yeah. I, I, I like to be practical. <laughs> and right. if I have two skeins of something, I want to use them. Two skeins and not <laughs> have some little us. Uh, right. Uh, Just a little bit at the end. And yeah. I've got to and say that. I, I, yeah. As a hand spinner, that's something I really appreciate because my yarn, my skeins don't always come out, you know, standard lengths. So I really like, you know, designs that I, I know I can use it all up or I, I know I can stop if I run out before, you know, the official yeah, end yeah. of the pattern. So in, in my patterns, I explain, for example, if you uh, watch this, uh, uh, I, I usually uh, tell about weight, for example, if you have this uh, much left, then you need to go and, for example, start decreasing. Or I have also a pattern that uh, use a couple skeins, but I work from two different directions and then you run out of one, you run out of second, you meet in here, you're done. <laughs> and so this is kind of... <laughs> different ways to get uh yeah to help make that happen yarn. That, up, to the, up to the max that's cool that's very cool um so Sheila um designs that are challenging easy ones that you can crank out um <laughs> kind of a bit of both um I want it to be a challenge I challenge myself to do something that looks difficult and keeps my attention span. I I I get bored. <laughs> um, so I need something that's going to keep my attention span, but I don't want it to be so hard. I want everything explained well mm -hmm. so that the knitter doesn't you know go, oh my God, this is just too much. You know, it, it's one stitch at a time. So yeah that's a challenge for me too then is not only coming up with the design that keeps my attention but also presenting it in a way that the crafter is going to not feel like it's defeating them right thank you Shana um I would say my process is incredibly slow <laughs> um because um I tend to create something and then I do what I call road testing. Like I use it or wear it for a while mm. before I commit to it. And so I actually, I was just looking at some photos this morning with my son and the cowl I'm wearing, I was knitting it a year ago. I started knitting it. And I, I mean, I specifically remember just working on the proportion to wear I made it probably four times. It's like a one, it's a one skein DK cowl, right? And I probably made it four times. And then I finally, I was happy with it. Um, I, yeah. So in the past year, I was thinking about this because I participated in one of these panels last year. And um, I thought of rewatching it to see what I said last year. And I, and I didn't rewatch it. I'll just <laughs> tell you that right now. But um I had a couple of things this year that I was working on some bigger garment pieces. And for a number of reasons, I, I kind of needed to put them aside. 
And I thought, I know what I'll do. I'll, I have this book, you know, the sketchbook of just things in my head. I should make some of the smaller ones that will, that will be easier. And spoiler, it was not. Um, so I've had several moments of feeling really overwhelmed just because there's various things in various states of development. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, most of them, I'm kind of like looking around the room right now. I was like, none of you have seen most of them either. Right. Um, and so I know just sort of the, the process, I know I've had a, I had a piece that I like a garment piece that I finished, I wore it around and then I thought it's, it's wrong. Um, and so I'm in the process of ripping it out and it's not the first time I've done that. So, um, gosh, I, I think at the end of the day, I'm not, I, I don't in my wardrobe and in my life, I know what types of things I gravitate towards. Um, and so I, I like to have designs that fit with my lifestyle and sort of my, my choices. Um, and so for me, oftentimes they are simpler things, um, not complicated stitches and so forth. Um, I too, as I mentioned, um, Natalia, you were talking about like, you have two skeins of yarn and you just want to use the two skeins. I was like, I am there with you. Right. Um, I love that just sort of the, that, that accomplishment and feeling of like, what can I do with this, with this stuff? So. That's yeah, that's, that's very cool. So before you start writing, you know, a pattern, it's really tried and tested. You make sure you love it and you redesign before writing it all down. Um, yeah. And I know that I've talked to a lot of designer friends and we all have different processes about how we go through things. So mine is usually like a handful of notes on paper. Um, occasionally they're digital notes, but they're usually notes on paper. Um, a little bit of, um, a little bit of math, um, and then making a thing and actually trying it. And so, um, I've, I've thought about, is that, is that efficient? I don't really know. I think for me, um, from my architectural background and so from learning through school as an architect and then teaching at a few different colleges, we work with study models a lot. And so it's kind of like the swatch, right? Like, it's sort of like Sheila, you were saying, it's like, oh, I made, like, I didn't even realize what I was doing. It's like testing the idea and sort of feeling it and having it. It's like, is it doing what I thought it would do? And so I have definitely created some things that have never seen the light of day because um, I had an idea for a shape of a hat I and a construction I hadn't seen. And then I got finished and I thought, I probably haven't seen it because it doesn't really work. But um, <laughs> right, but I made it. And I tried it and then it ended up kind of launching me into it. I thought, oh, this isn't the right use case. But if I take that tech, again, it's all garter stitch. But if I take that technique and I use a different shape, I can make this other thing. And so I, I have to remind myself, I think it's not, you know, it's okay if I'm not as prolific as I, as I might have in my dreams of, um, of, of coming out with things. Um, because I know that what I do choose to go forward with, I feel, I feel strongly about. So. Awesome. Um, next one is a very interesting question. That is, um, at the intersection, I would say of accessibility and marketing which are two things I really, I'm really into. So um, it, it was, how do you decide what info about a pattern you share on your sales platforms? Because some of our participants, you know, you all sell out, well, outside Ravelry, in addition to their, if you want to, but a, a lot of our participants are unable to use Ravelry and often other social media platforms as well so the misinformation you know about the yarn weight the construction of 
the garment the garment or photos like say of the back of the garment or something like that so what do you do to make sure that makers know what they're buying and that they have access to all the information they need up front before they buy so maybe Lori. <laughs> that seems the order um so I am one of the people who is affected by the Ravelry um, site update, so I do not actually sell on Ravelry at all. Um, my patterns are in their database because, you know, you can't get away from that. But I sell entirely off of my own website, which is powered by PayHip. Um, I do feel that, you know, having all the information is very um, important when somebody buys a pattern. My garment um, patterns, for instance, you can download the, the full schematic before you buy it. So you know what, if you made it without any modifications, you know, how you know, much ease you would have at your wrist, um, at your neck, you know, how long it is. It's not just a, a bust measurement. You got the entire schematic available. Um, and I tell you, you know, what yarn I used, what, you know, the fiber was, so you can make appropriate, um, substitutions, you know, not everybody can have wool, so, you know, or you want a different dyer, all those things. So, um, all the, basically it's everything that you would see on like the first couple pages of the pattern show up on my website, you know, hook size, yarn, yarn quantities, everything you need to know. Um, and, you know, sometimes I miss stuff. If, if anybody shows up and they say, oh, you missed this on this one, let me know. I will happily give that to people. So. Awesome. That That's awesome. Cause yeah, that's really important. I think because, uh, you know, having your own website, uh, one thing we hear often is that it's hard to get people to come to the site, but once they're there, the marketing doesn't stop. You know, it's, you, you have to, um, what you tell people once they're there is still marketing. You know, it's still giving them the information they need to make an informed buying decision. So will they find um, it or will they have to you know, go, go back not knowing. And because as we often hear a confused buyer doesn't buy, you know, so. Yeah. And I also don't want an upset buyer. Like I don't want somebody to buy something and then realize that for, you know, they thought they had the yarn for it and then they don't, or, you know, this doesn't work for their body shape um, or, you know, stuff like that. So mm -hmm. it's all there. Right. Natalia, do you have something specific that you you try to to put forward for to help people so, with that? Um, so first of all, um, all all my pattern uh, accessories. So I don't have garments yet. So it's I don't give, uh, for example, like Laura said, uh, schematic with all the uh, sizes and so on. So, but I always uh, explain if. I, I made sample with this yarn. What is the weight exactly? Uh, what is the number? Not only weight, but like what is the uh, yardage per uh, 100 grams? Mm -hmm. uh, for me, even for myself, I need to know numbers per 100 grams, not for two ounces or <laughs> whatever ounces. I'm a magic girl. So <laughs> for me, 100 grams so this is i know this is the yarn this and, and this so i can uh substitute this for uh with it. and also uh explaining um uh, i try to add for each of the pattern blog post so i'm a couple <laughs> patterns behind on this but anyway most of them uh, of my patterns uh i have blog posts and I give not only uh, explanation what you can find in the pattern, what sizes, what uh, measurements, of what yarn and gauge and all the um, numbers, what you need to know before you, uh, but also a little uh, story behind the patterns mm -hmm. or uh, also what, ki what kind of changes you can make to mm -hmm. adjust for you for yourself 
I I like when people uh, use the pattern, but making them for themselves specifically. And if I give them, for example, if you want to jump size uh, up here or shorten your length of the scarf or widen or whatever, here's what you need to do. I So it's not directly... Um, like uh, going by the stitch numbers or by the row numbers, but you you will have the idea what you can change and customize uh, your project for yourself. Right. So you give them the information they need to take your design idea and make make it their own. Yes. And, and yeah. really, the blog post with extra information is uh, is a great way to do it. Do, do you link to those blog posts in the sales page for each pattern? Yeah, so uh, yeah, so I have all my patterns on my website, but uh, it's not all the sales going all through Payhip or Ravelry. So, and on Payhip, I have uh, extra link to the blog post or yeah, other places. That's awesome. That's people can find if they want more information. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And great. Thank you. Sheila, do you have anything specific you, you keep in mind related to that? I always think, what do I want to know before I buy a pattern? Yes. So what, what do I need? I need to know the yarn weight. I need to know yardage, meters, grams, whatever. I need all that information. So that's, I'm very meticulous about making sure I have every amount, you know, there because I, I need a list. Um, otherwise, I forget things. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I so think a I, lot of people are like me. So, you know. Um, yeah, exactly. So as a designer, it's so good to to buy other people's patterns so that you can Put yourself in the shoes of the customer and exactly. think like that. The other thing I do, um, and I think it helps um, the crafter out, is I always have a list of, of the skills that are going to be used. And if I've got a tutorial or um, I do a lot of photo tutorials, they're a separate, they're blog posts, but they're also linked. I have a helpful post. Uh, page on my blog on my site so that people can find well what was that cast on or so I've got all the links there for people and I will mention you know I use this cast on I have a tutorial for that you know so if people aren't aware how to do something I've got the help there for them mm -hmm. I, I love that. I really, really appreciate those lists of skills required so so that I know beforehand, okay, is this going to use something that I'm comfortable with or that I hate doing? Or, you know, <laughs> is that the pattern for me? It helps making a, a, a good decision, right? Shayna, you do you do have something on your website that really, really helps. And it oh. is the the photo yeah. gallery of your testers. Yeah, thanks. Um, so a couple of years ago, uh, so I do sell my patterns on Ravelry, but it's important to me to also um, have the Payhip store. And what I realized is, um, and I could just be really bad at this, but I couldn't figure out how to get captions on the photos on Payhip. And so pretty quickly I thought, well, I need another place to tell a little bit more about the photos. I also, and again, things may have changed, but I had a limited number of photos that I could add to the to the Payhip store. So in addition to the things that others have mentioned about um, the skills needed, the yarn um, properties, um, how much of the yarn, uh, needles, and and so forth. In addition to that, um, I will I have a page on my website. So every one of my patterns has a pattern page, and then it has a gallery page, and so it shows what other people have made. And so when people test knit for me. Um, or I also have like an email address. If you've made one of my patterns and you're excited about your photo, you can send me 
um, a photo to gallery at shanealliance.com and I'll add it in the gallery. And so um, this was important to me to make a place that you could see what other people look like because not everyone might like my colors or my styling or the, it might not resonate with me. So it's part of um, when someone test knits for me, I ask them, I say, give me some, you know, it doesn't have your, I'm not asking you to have a professional photographer, but take a photo that you would like to see. If you were looking at a pattern and you thought, oh, that that was really neat. So I suggest to people, you know, let's say that you notice that you're always enjoying photos of people by trees, whatever, maybe take your photo of the tree, right? And so make it the kind of photo that you would like to see. Um, and I try to have, um, when, when, you know, when I have interest in my patterns, I try to, um, have different representation of, of people, places, colors, yarn types um, as well. I tend to um, have a lot of uh, people enjoy my patterns who are hand spinners. And so I always try to highlight when people have used hand spun yarn in my work as well. And so when, so my, my husband helps manage my website. And when we started this feature, he said, well, what do other people do? I said, I haven't seen anyone do it like this. And so I know my gallery isn't perfect because some of the pictures are vertical and some are horizontal and some are square, but I kind of realized like that you can only see a little bit of behind me, but like, that's who I am. Like, it's kind of a, it, it's kind of, it's, um, it's sort of all of the things that I love and I'm passionate about. And so I love showing off. I love getting to show off other people. Um, and so if any of you here have made any of my designs and are, have an interest in having me, um, some of you might already be on the website and, um, or if you have an interest in having me showcase some of it, I'm always excited to add more, um, photos as well. And one great thing with, with that as well is that beyond, you know, the different colors and everything, we get to see your designs on different body shapes which is really, really interesting because when the designer is always the model, well, I, I totally understand that it's a lot easier, you know, for them to to do that for their pictures, but it, it doesn't um, let everyone, you know, easily see themselves in, in that garment. So when you get to see, you know, people with different body shapes like that, like, in your gallery, that's really, really cool because a lot of people now can have a better idea of what the garment would look like on them. So, um, well, time flies. I'm going for two, last two questions, quick ones. Um, tell us about a design of yours that you think crafters would love making, but which hasn't taken up or not taken up you know, as well as you hoped for, or well, highlight one of your designs that you wish, you know, more people would look at. Laurie, go ahead. Oh, I didn't prep for this question. Here, I'll just, um, I will tell everybody, I just had a book come out. It's called Exploring Tunisian Crochet. <laughs> um, I think Tunisian Crochet in general is very, underserved. Um, a lot of people haven't heard of it or they, you know, are a little intimidated because it's less popular. So um, I'll just say that, you know, I have a lot of very beginner friendly, um, don't need to know anything. You can use a regular crochet hook designs, um, stuff like um, my Escalera wrap. It, it, You never have more than like 10 stitches on the, the hook, so you can just use a regular crochet hook to go start learning to do Tunisian crochet. Awesome, awesome. And yeah, uh, I, I'm glad you highlighted the book as well, because that's, uh, it, we so often tend to look for things online now, but yeah, yeah I, I hope really the book has, meets the success that it deserves. Natalia, it, it, do, it, it, yeah, sorry. I was gonna just say it, it's for all skill levels. It has patterns that are accessible to people who've never done stuff before, and you know it also goes through some more advanced stuff. So, if you've been curious, go grab the book. It's available everywhere books are sold: Amazon, Barnes and Noble, everywhere. Um, can I just jump in and say the book is beautiful? I somehow, Lori, I have it here, and I'm 
looking frantically, but Lori has beautiful <laughs> photos that um, very clearly explain the stitches. Mm -hmm. And I read through it and I thought I, I could do that. Right. Um, so she's done a great job with this book. Um, it's, it's really beautiful. Well, I'm really Thank glad you. to know about it because I, I need that book, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for you know uh, I know what a huge undertaking writing a book is um so great job and I really hope I'll have to go grab it so Natalia any design of yours that you would like to highlight that you would wish more people would make oh, I'm waiting, waiting right now this is a three-color caplet so you can wear it like a caplet on your shoulders or you can wear it like a big cowl, just swing it here and so. Uh, it's, uh, I published like last month, so, but I didn't promote yet. <laughs> so <laughs> probably nobody knows it's published. That, um, yeah, that's why I'm gonna show to other people. So this is my, and it's work sideways and yeah. It's lace, it, it's knitted, uh, it's knitting, yeah. So if this one is knit, uh, are, you, are you planning on doing a crochet version of it since you often do? Uh, it's not in my plans right now, but it's it's lace, uh, yeah, I can. Yeah, do it's different. Magic. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, thank you for showing it off. It's a lovely design. Sheila. Um, Sheila, you're muted. There we go. Sorry about that. No problem. Um, oh dear. I didn't prep for this question either. Um, <laughs> uh, trying to think, um, what do I have nearby? Um, 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 do I have, um, I thought I had it. How about no, what I design don't. you think people would enjoy making the most? Yeah. Just, oh, just and shout out something. Shout out something people would enjoy. Um, probably, let me think, let me think. I think my light jig tam is probably one hmm. of the most enjoyable knits. It's a very quick little knit. Um, so a people... great way to to dip it toe into your universe. Yes. Yes. Awesome. I would have to say. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, a lovely yeah. idea. And sh thank you. Shayna, do you have one that you wish to highlight right now? Again, I feel like such a mess. I'm like, I found my copy of Lori's book. So I got really excited about that. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, I still have to answer this question. So I'm, I I just want to brag about Lori for a minute. Like there's color coding in the book. Um, it's so cool. Um, I'm not going to show the whole book, obviously, but I just, Lori, I think this is so clever. Um, and then I will say something else. I'm always, I'm nothing if not off topic. So uh, <laughs> that's just who I am. Um, Shana, yeah, Shana and I have been friends for probably like four or five years now. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so like, look, there's just colors here. Right. And then, and then you look through and then she shows you how to do each one and she's using the same color. So it's great. It's, it's brilliant. Okay. Um, so as I said, I have a lot of modular designs. I'm um, actually, and or reversible things. So I guess I'll just say some of my, like, you're not supposed to pick favorites, but I'm gonna go pick some favorites. So um, I'm wearing the drawn together cowl, um, which is a gender inclusive design. It's reversible. It's got a functional drawstring um, and uses a DK weight yarn. I have, um, recalibrate, which is a modular garment. Um, this one is reversible, adjustable, customizable. No one little detail section um, uses more than 20 grams of yarn in any size. It's fingering weight at a super loose gauge. And a lot of people use hand spun for this one. There's also someone in my gallery who used a crazy Zauer ball, the color changing yarn. And it is like um, it's brilliant because the knitting changes direction. So then the 
the yeah yeah it's so cool it, it really shows it up well yeah I mean she shared that and I was like that is so cool right that's so cool um well. and uh and then I'll just show you I showed you before my split decision myths and so I've got a um I've got a hat version of this too they mm. use DK weight yarn um it's a lot of fun um, and they don't use a ton of yarn. I actually just made my husband another pair last week because he'd been wearing these and he said, but these are your sample. Can I get the same ones? So, uh, <laughs> his pairs upstairs. Yeah. So those are a couple of things I'll show you. I do love it. Also. Um, I just, I think all of us probably, it's so exciting when somebody chooses to make your designs mm -hmm. and then they show you, um, mm -hmm. through discord, through Instagram, if, if you're using, um, Ravelry or what have you. I think that is just a, a very exciting thing to know again, that someone has chosen to spend some of their money and time on something that you thought of in your brain. It's super cool. Yeah. Thank you. We do have two minutes left unless you're happy to, to stay for five more, more minutes if we have more questions. So I had one last question, but I think I'll open it up to, um, the audience. I don't know if anyone has any question, otherwise I'll go with my last one. Um, anyone raise your hand or put them in the chat or I will conclude maybe with um, what are we going to see from you next? What are your plans? Um, any design you're working on right now? Sorry. So the design, oh, that's okay. Um, the design that I'm not what I'm working on now because this uh, it takes too much effort brain wise. But um, my next design that's going to go into test hopefully in a couple weeks is a Tunisian crochet hoodie. I'm really excited about it because mm -hmm. you know I wear hoodies all the time at home and I'm finally getting around to making one in Tunisian. So awesome, awesome. Quickly, Natalia, anything you're working on? Uh, so I'm one of designers for Intendant magazine, and uh, at the end of December it will be published second. This is uh, number one, and my pattern is in the second uh, issue in in four. So <laughs> so soon will end digital for second issue is already um available and. Also, I plan um, for the beginning of the year to open uh, my first knit along for very fun uh, project that you can use your scrap yarn. Nice. So all the leftovers, it will be like a, a scarf or maybe a cowl if you decide. So this is my plans for <laughs> near future. Thank you. That's awesome. Sheila, anything you're working on? There we go. Oh, I, I don't use Zoom on my phone often enough, I think. Um, so behind me, you can kind of see, um, this is a tote bag that will be coming out in the new year. It's mm. Drew testing. It needs photographs and um, it, it really needs a lining um it's all garter stitch it's based on the log cabin squares nice and it's very oversized <laughs> <laughs> so if you need a, if you need a project bag for a blanket this this is what you're looking for there you um, go and then i have the other thing that i'm currently constructing um is a hooded cloak um it's got a nine strand cable panel that i designed that goes right from the top of the hood all the way down the back and it'll be in three sizes looking so, forward to seeing it it's yes. coming on really well there there is a sneak peek photo on my instagram you'll see it i think it's about five or six posts back but awesome. I took a picture of it. <laughs> Sounds gorgeous. Thank you, Shayna. What's coming up? Um, 
I have some fingerless mitts that I'm, st I'm still going to release two patterns this year. Why not? Right. Um, so I have some fingerless mitts that are just finishing testing. I have a little pair of boot toppers, um, mm. flash or leg warmers, Marika, I'm looking at you. Um, I just figuring out my numbers. Cause I don't know what the heck I did, but, um, they will be correct. Um, I have a cabled cowl coming out in January and then I am really, and so again, this was why I didn't want to watch mine from last year, because I probably said this last year, I have three garments that are in progress. They are all probably 90% done. And um, I would like to, I would like to keep going with them and, and some other, some other, um, some other things. I don't know. Well, Gosh, I sound like a mess, right? Um, yeah. For someone who, um, was saying that she was not as prolific as she hoped or would like to be. That sounds well, not bad at all. But this is my issue is then I'm like, oh, and that, oh, and that. And I'm very animated and like very excited. And um, I, th I think in my head, oh, I could do that in, you know, three hours or five hours or a week. And And then suddenly, like, even as one of you was just talking, I'll just, uh, I'm going to own up to this. As one of you was talking, I, a shape came to me. <laughs> something that someone said got me thinking about something else. And I just opened my notebook and added to another sketch. So there you go. That's so, who I am, right? Yeah. Can't wait to see it all um, in next year's database. <laughs> For the fast enough to run along. So looks like uh, we didn't have other questions coming through. So I I'm sorry I didn't leave enough time for people to, to ask questions, but it was a real delight to hear you, you know, um, discussing all of those things and sharing so generously about your process and uh, and what animates you and stuff. So, and I really want to thank our designers today. So Laurie, Natalia, Sheila, and Shayna, and also everybody, um, the audience, thank you for coming. We hope you enjoyed today's um, designer video panel. And I hope you'll check out our Fast Enough Yarn Along schedule for more events and activities. So we do have, uh, it, it's still going until the, the new year. So enjoy, have fun. So thanks again. Have a great day, everyone, and see you. Thank on this you. <laughs> Thanks all.